Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about aortic dissection because it was recently in the news. With that being said, now let's get started. In emergency medicine, there is a subject called acute aortic syndrome, and it's divided into aortic dissection, intramural thrombus, or penetrating atherosclerotic aortic ulcer. Before we talk about aortic dissection, let's talk about an aneurysm. An aneurysm is a local enlargement of an artery. It could be fusiform, like this, secular, not secular, and others. Others include berry aneurysm, also known as brain aneurysm, arteriovenous aneurysm, now we call it arteriovenous malformation, as well as microagonism, and we have dissecting aortic aneurysm. This was the old name. The new name is aortic dissection. There is a tear in the wall of the vessel, and then the blood accumulates here inside the wall. First, where is your heart located? Most people, unfortunately, think that the heart is on the left side. That's why the patient will come to you, Hey, doctor, it, it hurts here. That I have a severe chest pain. And they point using one finger on the left side of their chest. This is not cardiac chest pain. Why not? Because the heart is not on the left. The heart is central. Yeah, it is true that the left ventricle slightly deviates to the left, but the heart itself is central. That's why cardiac chest pain is a central chest pain. Also, when you have a heart attack, it's not that sharp. You cannot point to it with one finger. It's very dull. You point with your entire hand and you say, Doctor, it's as if an elephant is sitting on my chest. Please read that disclaimer, because one disclaimer a day keeps the lawyer at bay. I also believe this to be true. The story started when Theodore and Nicholas, a lovely married couple, went to the United States and they changed the family name for Papa Dimitrio into Demon or Diamond. Grandpa Papa Dimitrio was a banker in Athens and Smyrna, which is now Izmir in Turkey. These two people will have three beautiful children. One of them will become Jamie Demon. Jamie Demont studied psychology and economics and then went to Harvard Business School and then worked at Goldman Sachs. Not to be confused with Libman Sachs endocarditis, you know, the sterile fibrin containing vegetation and it happens on the mitral valve, usually both surfaces. It's very clean and you can see it in patients with lupus. Then he worked for American Distress, I mean Express, and then into Bank One. What's Bank One? Oh, Bank One was history, but now it was acquired by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. And then Jamie Demont became the CEO of Chase. Let's go back one step. When he went to American Express, the vice president was his father. This family is amazing. They left their banks at the Eurasian land at the apex and then left everything, went to the United States and then started all over. And they did it again and they reached the freaking apex. This is the largest bank in the freaking world. Just impressive, man. They rose like a freaking phoenix. Thursday, March 5th, 2020, which happens to be yesterday, in the corporate office of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, these people were talking about the effect of the new freaking virus on the global economy, when suddenly Jamie Dimon started vomiting. He even vomited on the Chase logo, and the chairman of the board as well as the board member said, what the F, Jamie, this costs too much money, what, like, what, what, what? I'm having a chest pain, you bunch of morons! Okay, Jemmy, how do you feel? I feel a severe tearing or ripping, sharp, stabbing central chest pain that radiates to the upper back between my two scapulae. And by the way, I'm vomiting, I'm sweating, and I'm having lightheadedness. Why lightheadedness, by the way? Because as we will discover, he has an aortic dissection. Why would you get lightheadedness from aortic dissection? There are two possibilities. It's possible that the aortic dissection is decreasing the blood flow to your brain, or one of the risk factors of aortic dissection is hypertension, like a lot, severe hypertension. And severe hypertension is notorious for causing lightheadedness. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So they took him to the hospital and then the competent doctor noticed these signs. There is hypertension, there is pulse differentials and blood pressure differentials. Like, what do you mean by differentials? The blood pressure and the pulse are different between the upper extremity and the lower extremity and even between the right arm and the left arm. Why is that? Look at this aorta. Ascending, arch and descending. And you know the three branches on the arch. This is called 
that right brachiocephalic artery and this is the left common carotid and then left subclavian. Imagine that the dissection occurred here. Now the right arm will be fine because the right brachiocephalic artery is fine. It even can have a higher blood pressure than the other one. Why? Because this one is supposed to be supplied by the left subclavian. But now the left subclavian is toast. So you will have very high blood pressure on your right arm, but low blood pressure in your left arm. We call this blood pressure differential. Not to be confused with your Toyota differential. Sorry, engineers. And then there is high pulse pressure, as well as a new murmur of aortic regurgitation. So tell us, doctor, how did you know? There is a new, how do you know that it's new? Like this is my patient for, for life. I know him. It's a new diastolic decrescendo murmur heard best at A2 area. What is A2? It's the left third intercostal space, very close to the sternal border. And it's accentuated by expire. Okay, Mr. Jamie and Mr. Demont, please expire. Exhale maximally. <sighs> hold it, baby. Hold it. And then lean forward. And the doctor listened. The diastolic decrescendo murmur was very clear. As clear as the decline in Chase stock price today. So let me explain. This is your beautiful aorta. Here is anterior, here is posterior. This is a side view. Here we call it the ascending aorta and then it arches. And then after that we have the descending aorta. In the thorax we're gonna call it the descending thoracic aorta. But this same aorta will change its name in the abdomen and it's gonna be called the abdominal aorta. The media is collapsing, man. Circulation per capita declined from 35% to less than 15%, according to the Brookings Institution. So why is that? I have no idea, man. I'm not an expert. I only know that this is a tear in the media. And this is exactly the pathophysiology of aortic dissection, a tear in the media. So here is the lovely ascending aorta, arch, and then descending. The tear can happen anywhere. Let's say that the tear happened here, and then the blood was in the lumen, normally. But then it entered into the secret chamber, and this is called the aortic dissection, usually inside the tunica media, and therefore it's covered from one side by a very thin layer of the media as well as the adventitia, and from the other side by a very thin part of the media as well as the tunica intima. Not to be confused with your intimate relationships. What are the complications of this aortic dissection? Okay, let's not forget that there is an aortic valve here. So if you hit the valve, you can get aortic regurgitation. That's why the competent doctor heard the diastolic decrescendo murmur. But what if bleeding happened like it went through the adventitia and blood accumulated around your beautiful heart? This is called hemopericardium. If it's fast and severe, it's called cardiac tamponade. This ascending aorta is crucial. Why? Because your lovely coronary arteries leave the ascending aorta. So if the dissection hit your coronary artery, what is the result? Myocardial infarction or angina. Which one is more common to be hit? The right coronary or the left coronary? The right coronary. So if you hit the right coronary artery, what are the sides of the heart or the surfaces that are going to be affected? Is it the right border, the inferior surface, the left border, the posterior surface, the septum? Let me know the answer in the comment section. What are the risk factors of aortic dissection? Hypertension. Of course, when you are the CEO of freaking JP Morgan Chase & Company, of course you can get hypertension. You'll manage all of these employees. You have to deal with the government and with political activists and with the IRS, the SEC, the KGB, I mean the CFPB. The managers, the shareholders, the stakeholders, of course he gets hypertension. What else? Vasculitis, such as Takayasu arthritis, giant cell arthritis, polyarthritis nodosa, Bichette syndrome, connective tissue disease, such as Marfan's, Ehlers-Danlos, osteogenesis imperfecta. Why is this blue? Because it can lead to a blue sclera. Cystic medial necrosis, chistroma, smoking, smoking. Stop it, Jamie, Jamie. Cocaine and methamphetamine, Jamie. I know that Chase Bank uses Vayner Media as their advertising agency, so this explains where he got the cocaine and meth from. So here's a case for you. A 63-year-old male, Jamie Demont, or Diamond, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase & Company, by the way, the last thing that I care about right now is his business card. Oh, you mean he's rich and I can get sued if I do a poor job? 
But if I do a good job, I get to marry his daughter. Okay. Comes in complaining of severe tearing or ripping sharp, stabbing central to spine that radiates to the upper back between the scapulae. Also, he's vomiting, sweating, and has lightheadedness. He has a history of hypertension. I know that. Vital signs are significant for tachycardia, tachypnea, and a blood pressure of 160 over 90. Question number one, what's the best initial test? Question number two, what is the most accurate test? Now, please pause. Let's dissect that. So hypertension and Jamie Dimon. And of course, there is sharp stabbing central chest pain that radiates to the upper back. Vomiting all of this and the blood pressure is so high. What do you think the diagnosis is? This is aortic dissection, baby. So what is the best initial test? Believe it or not, it's chest x-ray. On your exam, always think cheap. How about D-dimer? You're saying that we are not going to do D-dimer? Shut up. Of course, we are going to do D-dimer, but it's not the first step. It's going to take time until it comes back. Chest x-ray, when it's an emergency, it's just on the spot, baby. What would you see on chest x-ray? A widened mediastinum because of the dissection. Okay, after you see that on chest x-ray, what should you do next? You can go with the CT angio or MR angio. But what's the most accurate test? Freaking angiography. Oh, so what's the difference between CT angio and angiography? Big difference. CT angio is just a stupid CT scan, but you inject contrast before that. Oh, so it's not invasive. No, it's not invasive. Unless you think that injecting contrast is that invasive. But angiography is freaking invasive. That's like a probe that enters into your vessel. And then it went, goes to your arteries and then it, until it reaches the aorta. And then you take a picture of the aorta. All of this is a beautiful video. That's the most accurate test. How do you classify the aortic dissection? There are several classifications, two very famous ones. The first one is called DeBay key classification, which we don't care about right now. And the second classification is the Stanford classification. We have Stanford type A and Stanford type B. This is really a genius classification. Why? Because they know that the most severe ones are the ones that involve the ascending aorta because there is a risk for your coronary. So anything that touches the ascending aorta, regardless of the site or origin, we call this Stanford type A. But Stanford type A, any other section that does not affect the ascending aorta, whether you are in the arch, the thoracic or the abdominal aorta, we don't give a rip. How would you diagnose aortic dissection? Transesophageal echo is the diagnosis of choice if it's type A. How about if it's type B, which means it's not involving the ascending aorta? Go with the chest CT, cardiac CT, or MRI. What's the initial test? Usually chest x-ray, you will see a widened mediastinum. What's the most accurate test? Angiography, not to be confused with CT angio. What are other tests that might help? CT angio can help, MRA can help. Magnetic resonance angiography. How do you manage aortic dissection? It depends on the Stanford type. If it's Stanford type A, which involves the ascending aorta, you gotta go with the emergency surgery, man. And this is exactly what happened to Jamie Dimon. Yep, he had surgery for three freaking hours on that same day. And according to a memo released by Chase Bank, he's fine right now. Unless, of course, he watches this video. This will be dangerous for her, his heart. How do you manage Stanford type B? Type B, it doesn't involve the ascending, so it's not that urgent. Manage the underlying risk factors. Hypertension, control it, smoking. Jamie, you need to stop smoking. How do you manage hypertension? You start with lifestyle modification. Lose weight, dash diet, which is low in salt, low in saturated fat, and rich in fruits and vegetables, as well as you recommend lots of aerobic exercises. But for a blood pressure of 160 over 90, you probably are going to need medications such as sympatholytics, direct vasodilators, calcium channel blockers, and the RAS modulators. And don't forget your diuretics. But what if it's like Jamie's case, a hypertensive urgency slash emergency? What's the difference between them? Emergency has an end organ damage. Do you think Jamie had end organ damage? Yeah, the aortic dissection is an end organ damage. So what should you do? You go all in. You can use beta blockers, not all of them. You can use phenoldepam. You can use nicardipine or clividipine. And you can use sodium nitroprusside. Since Jamie had the problem with the ascending aorta, also known as Stanford type A, we go with the surgery. What if it was B? You manage the blood pressure. 
beta blockers and sodium nitroperoxide. Which one should you give first, beta blockers or sodium nitroperoxide? Let me know the answer in the comment section and please explain why. If you like what you see so far, I have a premium course about cardiac pharmacology on my website. You can download a free sample. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. For the next 17 students only, there is a 50% discount. Just use the promo code CARDIOFARM50. Okay, Medicosis, your explanation is good, but why do you mention Jamie Dimon? I just hate him. He's, 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 he's so rich and he's overpaid. He does not deserve any of that. I'm just mad. So let me tell you a story. In an old Russian fable, there were two farmers, Ivan and Boris. Boris had a goat, but Ivan did not. One day, Ivan rubbed the lamp and a genie appeared. And the genie said, I will grant you one wish. What would you like? What do you think Ivan said? He said, I want Boris go to die. That's exactly what you did there. You did not say, I want to make as much money as him or I want to serve humanity better than him. You just said, I want him to have less. Jamie Dimon had a throat cancer in 2014 and an aortic dissection in 2020. The people who are happier than me are people I do not know well. Gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The happiest person is not the one who has more money. It's the one who wakes up and has no pressure in their chest. This is Gary Vaynerchuk, the same guy from which Jamie got his cocaine and meth. Oh, so that's why you said no pressure in his chest. Oh, that makes sense now. By the way, look at this hand. This is a central cardiac chest pain because he's pointing not with one finger, but with his entire hand because it's poorly localized. But if it, this was an aortic dissection, it could be sharp. So if it was an aortic dissection, it's acceptable to point with one finger. Here is a second point. Look at this dilated pupil. This is cocaine. Thank you for watching, smash like, subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here, you can email me here, you can get my cardiac pharmacology course here. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 for the next 17 students. Thank you so much for watching, as always be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.